Hi everyone, I'm Warda, a STEM Scholar Mentor, and today we'll be starting Lesson 3 of Unit 6 of Algebra 1, Modeling Linear Inequalities. So, first let's go over what a linear inequality describes. It describes a part of a number line with either an upper limit, a lower limit, or both upper and lower limits. So this sounds a little bit um, unclear, so we're going to see some demonstrations. First we have our upper limit. So, this problem says, a playground for little kids will not allow children older than four years. If A represents age in years, this can be represented as. So, um, this playground won't allow kids that are older than four years. So, older than four years, five, right? And we have age, our variable is A, which represents age. So, our inequality will be A is less than five. It could have also been a is greater than 4, but we're going to go with this um, because this is an upper limit problem. Since we're going with older than 4, this is a fan, like upper limit is just a fancier way of saying that we're going with a greater number than what's given. And then, as we learned in our last lesson, we're going to graph this. So we have our open circle because it's less than or greater than. When it doesn't have a line underneath the sign, we go with an open circle. And it's going, and we're asking for um, a value that's less than 5. So we're going to go this way, since all of these numbers are less than 5. For a lower limit, it's just going to be the opposite. So in this problem, it says a state will not allow persons below the age of 21 to drink alcohol. If A represents age in years, the legal drinking age can be represented as. So here, um, what it's telling us is that Anybody below the age of 21 cannot drink alcohol. So if you're 21 and older, you can drink alcohol. So, we're, so our inequality will be A, age, is greater than or equal to 21. And we're going to graph that. Um, so we have our closed circle because this is greater than or equal to. And we're going to go in the left direction because all these numbers are greater than 21. Now, for, for both upper and lower limits, um, this would be in between two numbers. So here it says, a high school football team limits participation to students from 14 to 18 years old. If A represents age in years, the participation on the football team can be represented as. So we're looking for an upper limit. The highest limit we have here is 18. So um, it actually limits participation from students from 14 to 18 so if we if you're 18 you cannot be um, on the football team and if you're 14 you also can't be on the football team so um, the least so you can be on the football team if you're 13 because that's um, that's below 14 well that's not restricting the age limit from 14 to 18 so 13 and 19, because 19 is more than 18, and 13 is less than 14. So when they're asking for both upper and lower limit, they usually give you a limit, a, a bit of a restriction. And if it's outside of that, you just graph it. So here we have, we're starting off with 13, open circle, because um, this is less than. And then we have our age, our variable, and we stop right here. So 19 is also less than so we have our open circle now this in both upper and lower limit questions this can also be um less than or and then less than and equal to so if they were to say that a high school football team limits participation to students from 14 but um 18 but if you're 19 you can join the football team we would put less than or equal to 19. So, now we're going to go over a word problem um, that of inequalities. So, this one states there are 461 students and 20 teachers taking buses on a trip to a museum. Each bus can see a maximum of 52, 52 people. What is the least number of buses needed for the trip? So, here's the information we have. 46, 461 students and 20 teachers. So if we add that up, we'll get the total number of people. And that there are 52 people max 
a maximum of 52 people in each bus. So, once we turn this into an inequality, we'll have... Well, first of all, let's give ourselves a variable. So, we have B for the number of buses, the total number of buses needed. We're going to add our students and teachers, 461 plus 20, and then dividing that by 52 to get the number of buses. Because this is the number of people total, and this is the number of people that each bus can seat. So, we're going to use greater than or equal to, because the number of... Um, the number of people will obviously be a lot more than the people than the number of buses and well no sorry that's not what they're saying um the number of people in each bus will be greater than than um will most will be greater than the number of buses and they ask for the least number of buses needed for the trip so it can also be greater than just in case this adds up to an even amount and they will all go into the same number of buses. Now, once we evaluate this, we get 9.25 as our answer. But because this is a, a problem asking for people, um, sorry, not for people, for buses, we can't have um, one fourth of a bus, obviously. So we're going to take, we're going to round this up to the next number. So the least number of buses that we're going to need is 10 buses. Because if we have um, if we have more people, um, we can't have a decimal of a person. So if we have at least one more person, then we're going to have to seat them in a different bus. Now I want you guys to do two questions on your own. So just pause the screen and complete them, and then we'll go over them in the next few slides. Okay, so here are, the quest here are the answers that you should have gotten. Number one is choice number three, and number two is choice number four. So for the first question, it says, Connor wants to attend the town carnival. The price of admission to the carnival is $4.50, and each ride costs an additional $0.79. Cents. If he can spend at most $16 at the carnival, which inequality can be used to solve for R, the number of rides Connor can go on, and what is the maximum number of rides he can go on? So, so the information we're given is that the price of admission to the carnival is $4.50. So this is a fee. We know that this has to be paid. Um, and each ride, each ride, so this will be a multiplication, costs an additional $0.79. Cents. So um, we can already cancel these two out, these two um, answer choices out, because we have each corresponding with each ride, which is R. And 79 cents so this would be 0.79 times r and we're um doing it as 0.79 because this is cents and this is dollars when they're asking for money units we have to keep um the units intact so um once we write this down we have four dollars and fifty cents which is our fee has to be paid it's a constant and then 0.79R, which we just discussed, is less than or equal to $16, which is the max amount that he can bring. So we have these two equations here. It's going to be between these two. So let's solve it. Subtract 4.50 on both sides. We're stuck with 0.79R is less than or equal to 11.50. Divide 0.79 on both sides, and we have R is equal to... Um, R is less than or equal to 14 point mm, blah blah blah. So, the maximum number of rides he can go on is what they're asking us. So, we know that, just looking at it logically, he doesn't have enough money to go on a 15th ride. Because if he's stuck with this much money, he can't get, um, he can't get a few more cents. So, we're going to stop at 14 rides, and we're going to round this down, even if it ends in 5. Because usually when it comes to 0.5 in problems, we round it upwards. But because this is, um, this is kind of when we work with inequality word problems, we kind of had to put in logic in here. So, we can't get more money, so we're going to round this down. And we're stuck with 14 rides, which is choice number 3. 
For the second question, we can just dissect this down by looking at the problem. So it says the cost of a pack of chewing gum in a vending machine is point is um, seventy five cents. The cost of a bottle of juice is this in the same machine is one dollar and twenty five cents. Julia has twenty two dollars to spend on chewing gum and bottles of juice for her team, and she must buy seven packs of chewing gum. If B can represent the number of bottles of juice, which inequality represents the maximum number of bottles she can buy? So, um, starting off. We know that this is also another money problem. So $22 is the maximum that she has. So already we can get rid of one and three because here they're making the number of the price of the products that she's buying greater than the number of money that she has. But we know that that's not true because if she doesn't have enough money to buy the products, then obviously the number the money that the products are going to sell for or the number of products that she's going to buy is going to be less than the number of money that she has now another clue that we can take is sh they tell us that she must buy seven packs of chewing gum seven packs and um if b represents the number of bottles of juice so b is going to correspond with the cost of a bottle of juice, which is $1.25, and seven packs should be substituted in to the, um, the cost of a pack of chewing gum, which is um, 75 cents. So once we correlate that together, we have uh, 75 cents times seven, which is right here. So our answer will be choice number four. That's all for this lesson. Thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, don't be afraid to contact my email down here. And if you're looking to practice with any additional resources, JMAP and Khan Academy are some great ones.